Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this concertina pop-up card. It's kind of evolved from the unusual concertina step card. So once you see it, you'll kind of get it. But it's a six by six. That's the front with just the happy birthday. This is the bright rose or happy birthday die. I've kept it quite simple because once you open it up inside, you have this pop-up piece. Okay, and it has this section in here, which will, it basically keeps this gives it this shape to be able to stay. So you just kind of put it into its place, there we go. And it will stay in that kind of right angle style. If you didn't have that piece underneath, you can do it without it, but if you try for yourself and have a look, you'll see what I mean. This bit just kind of flops around. It doesn't really hold in place, but it's got a really nice profile. I love all the different steps and I love all the little squares here. So it really does show off the papers, the coloured card, the mirrored card, everything I think just works really well. It's got a bow in the middle there which actually holds all this together and then you can write your message on the back and obviously you've got that on the front. So for this one I use the the paper tree. So this is Lakeside Blooms, beautiful pad, really is lovely and I, know I also use, this is the Essentials paper pad, this is the patterned paper pad. So you get 40 sheets of that one and 48 of that one. Everything will be linked below. It's very straightforward to make, you can also have it that way, so just like the other concertina card which I'll link up here and I'll probably link it further through the video as well, but you can have it, you know, that way. So they open it and see it that way and you could, you know, even these, these happy birthday sentiments do work this way. So I've used them on the panel cards before, but um, if you've got other ones that read vertical or something, then that would work. But I think it looks, yeah, I think it looks really sweet. So let me show you how to make it. So for today's, I'm using this one, which I've used already. It's a lovely paper pad. This is the Paper Boutiques. They're both by the same company and this is the Ocean Breeze. It's the paper kit and the the embellishment pad as well. Okay, and it's the embellishment pad that I've used to get all of these little squares here because one of the papers well, basically has one of these where you have four and then down here was a strip with all of these different pieces in. So I just cut that strip and then cut all the little images out. But they're beautiful, these cutout pieces. You can see what you get there. And I've also used one of the sentiments as well. But again, this will all be linked below. The kit's really good because you get the really nice thick cardboard pop-outs there as well. So that's that one. And that's the Bright Rosa birthday words, okay, which is probably the most used die set in terms of the words that I'm using at the moment. It's just, yeah, all in everything. So, right, we'll go through all that as we get to it. Let's just get straight into the card. So you want a six by six card blank. I've cut this one down myself. So this is a piece of 12 by six, okay? And along the 12 inch side, you just want to score as six inches. And that'll give you your base. Then you want a piece of 12 by six again. And this is gonna be the middle kind of concertina part. So along the 12 inch side, you wanna score at two, four, six, eight, and 10. Okay. Now these next score lines are purely decorative. You do not need to do them, but I quite like having the little squares. Okay. So to do those, you just pop it on the six inch side and you score at two past the first score line and down to the second. And then score at four, past the first score line and again down to the second. And then just rotate and do exactly again, two and four. So basically you will have six squares on each side, okay? And then these two plain panels in the middle. But those are completely optional because like I said, it's just more of a decorative piece. And then what you wanna do is you wanna fold so you've got a valley then a mountain, then a valley, mountain, and ending with a valley. So you should have that shape. These two pieces here are gonna stick inside here. Okay, like so, and then this piece is gonna go in behind. So this one here is eight by six, and along the eight inch side, you just wanna score at two, four, and six. Okay, and again, you wanna do a valley, a mountain, and a valley. If you want to flip your card over and score again before you fold, just so you don't get any cracking, you can do. But that piece is going to go inside. This is going to, obviously when it all sticks in, that's going to be in there and it will all square off and be nice and neat. Okay, so pop that to one side and we will just focus on decorating this piece first of all. So I'm going to get rid of my scoreboard. Okay, so I'm going to be using the happy birthday dies again and they are going to go 
down these two panels here. All of my squares, so you'll want two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve squares. The blue one I've got here is one and three quarters squared, and then the pattern, the little image here, is one and a half squared. And that will fit perfectly in each of these squares. So I'm going to stick them all down, just kind of making sure I've got different images kind of away from each other. They do double up, which again I don't mind, but I'm just going to get these all kind of placed and then, yeah, stick them all down. Okay, so they're all stuck down now, it looks really nice. Next I'm going to die cut this, so I'm using the Happy Birthday. And actually I don't need the outer frame, it's only the inner frame. So you just want the detail, just the words. So I'm going to have, uh, make sure I get them the right way up. So happy, and it's going to run right off the edge, but it won't cut, it's only going to cut the actual detail, it won't cut this whole piece out. Okay, so it doesn't have an outer cutting line, that's the word I'm always trying to look for. I don't want it, do I want it that way down? Okay, so that's those cut out. Now these pieces are, again, one and three quarters, because it's the size of these, the width of the blue ones on here, and then the length is five and three quarters. Okay, but now when that goes over there, I don't need to do any kind of like, you know, matting or anything because when it's against the colour underneath it really pops. I really like these so I'm going to stick them down. Okay so that's that now all done. Then before I stick all this inside I'm going to stick this piece on the back which is where I'm going to write my message. So this here is the blue piece is five and three quarters squared and then the pattern piece is five and a half squared so that's going to go on the back. Then on the front I have the same mat and layer so five and three quarters squared and five and a half squared. It's going to go on the front. I need to make sure that I get this so it's top folding so that's going to be that way and that's going to be that way. And then I have cut one of the lovely images from the pad. So this one comes in at four by four, and then this on over the top, and then the mat is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. That's going to go kind of up there. This is one of the little sentiments that you can cut out. So I just put dearest friend, and then inside it will say happy birthday. Again, I've just popped some. Um, a mat behind it there and some foam. This has all got foam on it and that one is going to come down here like that and then this bow I'm just going to pop at the top there. Okay so I'm going to get all of that stuck down first. Okay, so there's the front done and the back. So what you want to do is we're going to add two holes along this centre fold, all right? So I'm going to come in, yeah, came down two inches on this one. Let's have a little look. Oh, no, it's further, two and a half actually. So I'm going to grab my pencil and I'm just going to come down on that score line and just put a little pencil mark there, two and a half, and again, from this side, two and a half. Okay, now I'm using my circle screw punch here. If you don't have one of these, then I know there are other hole punch kind of devices that allow you to hole punch within a, an area that isn't restricted by a standard hole punch. But if you only have a standard hole punch, you can get away with that. Let me just see. Yeah, I mean, it just means your kind of bow is going to be quite long. Otherwise, I would say use a pokey tool and poke the hole through. And um, by the time you add the ribbon through, it probably won't you won't be able to see it anyway. So, um, yeah, you should still be able to do this okay. So then you're just going to punch the hole, and you want to make sure that you go over the line to try and get the circle, the punch. See, it's you know it's over this side and this side, so it's right in the middle of that score line. Then grab this piece here 
and you want to line it up. If you line it up so that the fold, they all sit in together, all right, like so, then you know that that score line, I can see the score line through the holes there. And then I'm just going to pop that straight over. Now, if you want to use a pencil and draw a pencil first and then do it separately, you can, but I can see there that that one's done. Okay, that's fine. Then you're going to flip it and it will be that way. So you want this one to have two mountains and a valley. It's going to be valley to that valley, all right? Valley to valley, that's what you want. Looks a bit like Batman, kind of, or a bat wing or something, but it's going to be valley to valley. Then grab some ribbon, so I've just got a thinner blue ribbon here. And you're going to pop it through the back of this piece, okay? And then you're going to go through this piece. Okay, pull that nice and tight, obviously without ripping, and then tie it in a nice bow. And you want a th the thinnest ribbon you can get, really. I think the ribbon I used on the other one was organza, so this is a little bit thicker, but it will be okay. You can afford to have a little bit of bulk. Okay, and now we're ready to stick it in. So what will happen is those two pieces will stick like that on one side, and then those two pieces will stick like that. And you want to make sure that this becomes a two by two square. All right, and it will all square off and line up perfectly because of this folded piece here. So I'm going to open mine up, and what you want to do is we're going to add glue to this side first, and then we'll do that side. So I'm just going to turn this over. So you, you do want to do the glue on, well, on this side to start off with, you could do one at a time, but on the, la on the other side, you need to do them both at the same time. Just, well, I'm actually saying that, I guess you could line one up. If you see what I'm doing, then you might be able to see if you can do it. So let's see, you could do, yeah, I guess you could stick that top one down first, because you could then lift all this back and then stick the second one down. So yeah, that one will work fine. So I'm just gonna line them up. You see what I'm doing? So stick, make sure that sticks down perfectly and lines, because they're both 12 by six pieces. So you wanna make sure that they butt right up to the very edge here. Okay, and you shouldn't really be able to see that it's two pieces. And then that one, you want it to sit right with that one there. Okay, and then just practice folding it all like that. Okay, so you can see how neat. And it will have quite a spring to it. Okay, and just make sure it is all secure. Now this side, yeah, so what you can do is just add the glue to the blue one, first of all. Because I'm using liquid glue, it does give me that wiggle room, which again is, is good. So like that. Keep it all squashed down and then just close the card. Okay. And then this one you can open up here and add your glue. Don't leave too long between because if you do need to adjust the blue one that I just stuck down, you want to be able to, so I can still wiggle that now if I need to. But now, I think we've done alright. Yeah, that blue one is perfect. So there's a few ways to do it. You can do them all at the same time, or you can do them separately, as I've just kind of done there. And if you just squash the whole thing down, you can again make sure that glue is uh, stuck. Okay, so I finished it all, and then I decided that I didn't like it that way, and that I prefer it this way, so I ripped off all of the squares and then stuck them all down again. Luckily, I've got away with it, so yeah, it can be done, and I just restuck it down again with the Kalau, and that that glue dries so stiff that, yeah, you wouldn't know, honestly, there is just literally no way of knowing that I ripped those off and, uh, yeah, stuck them the other way. So I do, like I said, I do like it that way. I think maybe it is because of the sentiments, actually thinking about it. They do look really nice when you read them. I guess the correct way. So yeah, so that's that version. I think it's so sweet. And then bringing this one again here, and then that one opens up. So they do they do sit there. You do just have to kind of just play with them just to kind of get them to go where you need them to. I mean, yeah, you may need to rest them against something, but they will go in the end. That one's starting to go back. I think because this one here. I think because this isn't craft card, this is slightly, this is about 280 GSM, craft card's 300 GSM, I think that is just giving it that extra strength to hold in that right angle. This one will go, this one will stay, but you do just kind of have to 
See? There we go. But it may start to go back again, but most of the time cards go on a mantle or on a shelf or something, so they will have something to lean against if need be. But it doesn't really matter either way because it can go that way as well because obviously that's the front of the card. So I love it. I really do. I think it's such a nice style. It will work. I would probably say go for a 300 GSM. See, look, that's staying now. Let's watch it. <laughs> no, let's not. It's staying. So it does work, but I love them. So I hope you've enjoyed them too. I hope it's inspired you. Everything will be linked below and all the measurements over on my blog. And yeah, thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.